So as you guys know, here's my 2017 Ram 2500. Um, and literally, this has been my, I know a lot of you won't believe it, but this has been my daily driver for like ever now. This thing, literally bought it brand new, and um, now it finally, right there. It only has 47,000 miles on it. It's literally been my daily driver. However, this, this is kind, this is a problem. Look at this. I, I couldn't shift, can't do anything. Um, it just, yeah. But this is a rubber isolator, so um, the transmission noise and all that doesn't get into the cab. Um, but it's a very, I guess, prone to failure point on these trucks. And um, yeah, I lost, I lost the, the, the stick the other night. I kind of need this truck, so I had two options here, an OEM shifter or an aftermarket shifter. The aftermarket shifters are obviously solid, um, so they, they, they will never break. Problem is with them being solid is there is no rubber isolator on them. With the with no rubber isolator, that, that means audible noise. Um, I'm gonna show you a trick today. We ended up with an aftermarket one because I need this truck and an OEM one is like, from what I saw online, was kind of a special order part and the dealer would have to order it in and all of that. I don't understand why this isn't a warranty or a recall because this seems to be a common problem um, across everywhere um, that these things just decide to give out. So a long time ago I put this weighted shift knob on. Um, honestly felt great. Um, shifting all that gave me a little bit more positive like res shifting response um, I don't know if I'm gonna put this back on with the new shifter just yet the new shifter is weighted itself so that may help us shift the shift boot here will be slid down enough to go and cover that hole there boom that's how it sits any trim package really um, what you're gonna do is pop it literally just pops up Two sides are hooked in, and then the rest of them are kind of just these spring clips that kind of hold it down. But um, you pop that off, and then down here. So down here on the floor, you pull this rubber um, shift boot back, um, the second one underneath this leather one, um, and there's two nuts right there. You loosen those two nuts and then the whole shifter will come off and I will show you what we're gonna replace it with. So I actually got this from Ohio Diesel Parts. I actually looked at them a long time ago when I um, wanted to put a taller shifter in this truck and I had it, I bought an Amazon extension. It was good for a minute. I'm gonna see how I like this. The shifters are only about $100. So if I ever wanna go longer, I can always upgrade. But for now, check this out. Check out these welds. That's pretty sharp. Any of you guys want to shift your Ohio diesel parts, um, check them out. One of the first things we're gonna do here is um, take off the knob. We gotta take this knob off because you gotta take the boot off. So also that weighted knob, it had like a nylon insert that kind of went on here and then that screwed into that. Well, I think that's stuck on here now, so that's really not going to um, come off anyway. Okay, so then 13 millimeter. Don't take both of them off. And then this stick shifter will slide right out. I don't know if you guys can hear this. But um, it snaps off right here. Ohio diesel parts, OEM. Boom. And because um, I don't want the metal on metal, we're gonna need to make it, um, we're gonna need to make our own rubber isolator.
then um, all you really gotta do is take your uh, shift boot here, put your boot back on. Really nothing to it. This is the yeah, the hook part seems to be in the back. Only thing else to uh, left to do really thread this knob back on and then we'll have this nut so that really takes and then you can set your um, shift pattern back whichever way you want so I'm definitely gonna end up getting a new knob whether it be OEM or um, an aftermarket one again because this one's just been on and off so many times it's all beaten up so first thing I could tell you is this thing is definitely definitely a hell of a lot stiffer than the OEM one I'm just shifting this it's all way 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 better response um, I can tell you that, that feels so much better. It's a little weighted. Um, this with the weighted knob is probably an incredible feeling. I can't believe, wow, that's, that's good. Let's check the sound difference. <laughs> Definitely comes up here a bit. See how it is driving. I've been driven this a few days. This thing's big. Wow. Nice. Nice. All the shifts are so much more like Wow, all the shifts are so much more, I don't want to say notchy, but more like affirmative. They feel great. The noise isn't too bad right now. Um with the rubber and stuff in there but i guess we'll keep an eye on that but other than that this thing feels really good definitely an upgrade compared to stock like that makes wow wow Now let's try out getting it in reverse. Oh, that's so much easier because it's like stiff. And then there's kind of at idle guys with the clutch out. I'll let me close the window so it gets a little quieter. Like I can definitely hear the gears rolling over in there. But I'd be interested to see what it actually sounds like without the rubber in there if need be. Um, not awful, but just how positive those shifts feel, absolutely unreal. So like I said, I could definitely tell that the noise was transferring through the stick. With that rubber in there, it does help. That rubber part on the factory shifter, the, the bending of it, you know, really doesn't allow for that positive just grab and shift. And this is an incredible feeling. I can't wait to actually get this thing and like run this through its paces. This thing is going to be getting the Hamilton valve springs and the push rods, as you guys know, with the compound turbos, and it already has um, the ARP 625s. 
the South Bend dual disc clutch, it does still have stock gearing, so it's not going to be super crazy. Um, I do want to either change this tire size or change the gearing size and the whole lift setup on this truck because it needs redone anyway. But um, I'm either keeping the 40s and re-gearing it or I'm going to bring the tire size down down a bit um, to let me feel the power of this thing. The only thing we were kind of worried about in that engine were the valve springs and the push rods um, because everything else can pretty much keep up with it so far with those ARP 625s. But because we're hitting those boost pressures like this, um, we're going to bend something soon and I can already tell that I, I, it definitely sounds a lot different now than it has before. So I think those springs are very, very tired. If you guys remember that when we did Ashley's Jeep, quick update on this before I got, before I let you guys go. Um, the Vertex shocks, the whole long arm kit on this Jeep, absolutely stellar. Um, this thing rides very, very good. Uh, these Rough Country M, you know, MTs as well, um, literally do the trick. They're pretty cheap and um, they're quiet they have an interesting hum it's it's very quiet very manageable and and it's pretty smooth um can't can't complain but I, regardless of the company at this point i don't care who you support or whatever you want to use but upgrading the shocks to something like that um well worth it like i, I obviously i did the fox on that truck but upgrading to like the vertex resi shocks on this game changer definite game changer Stay tuned guys, we got a lot of stuff coming. I'm gonna make it an effort to get some videos out to you guys because I miss you guys and making these videos and all of that. But um, if you guys enjoyed this video, shoot a thumbs up. If you haven't been here before, please get down and click subscribe. Drop me a comment if you haven't already. Take care and I'll see you guys in the next one.